For our first problem, we're going to start with an octahedron. You see the eight triangular faces there. You got the six vertices. And we're going to choose two of those six vertices at random. And we want the probability that those vertices are the endpoints of one of the edges of the octahedron. Now we're going to start off here the way we typically do with our probability problem. We're going to first count the number of successes, number of ways we can choose two of these vertices, such that they're the endpoints of one of the edges. And then we're going to divide by the number of possible outcomes, that is, the number of ways we can choose two of the vertices. Now, we'll start off with the successes. If I choose this vertex and this vertex, well, that gives me this edge. If I choose this vertex and this vertex, that gives me this edge. This vertex and this vertex gives me this edge. All we're doing here is counting the edges. For each edge of the octahedron, there's exactly one way I can choose a pair of vertices that are the endpoints of that edge. So if I just count the edges, then I'm counting the number of successes. I've got four edges down here connected to the bottom vertex, four edges up here connected to the top vertex, and I've got four edges that form this square in the middle. So that gives me a total of 12 successes. Now I have to count the number of possibilities, number of ways I can pick two of the six vertices of the octahedron. Well, there are six choices for the ver first vertex. Then once I've chosen one vertex, there are five choices remaining for the other vertex. But I have to be careful here. This is counting each pair of vertices twice. Now, if I look back at the successes, I was counting each success once. If I choose these two vertices, I get this one edge. I'm only counting that once for the one way I can choose two vertices. This 6 times 5 counts each one twice. For example, I could choose this vertex and then this one, or I could choose this one and then this one. This 6 times 5 counts those as different. We need to count them as the same. So to account for that, we divide by 2. And that makes us count each possibility once and only once. Now we just compute this. We have the 12 in the numerator. 6 times 5 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. We've got 12 over 15 simplifies as 4 fifths. Now wait a second. I do a bunch of computation like this in a probability problem, and I come out with a pretty simple answer. I have to go back and look at the problem again and see if there's a slicker way to do it, a way I can think about the problem a little bit differently and jump straight to the answer. Besides, if you can do a probability problem in two completely different ways and get the same answer, then you know you're right. So let's try to find another way to think about this. Well, instead of choosing the two vertices at the same time, let's choose them one at a time. Say we chose this one first. Now, no matter what one we choose first, there are going to be five others that we can choose as the second. There are going to be five possibilities. And again, no matter which one we choose first, four of those other possibilities are going to be connected to the original vertex by an edge. There are going to be four successes. So no matter what vertex we choose first, there are five possibilities remaining for the second and four successes out of those five possibilities. So our probability is four-fifths. Now, which of those methods did you like better? Yeah, I like the second one a lot better, too. Sometimes just thinking about a problem in a little bit different way. Let's just jump straight to the answer. Let's try that on another pro. I'm going to step out of the way here so you can read this. What we're doing here is we're starting with a grid of nine numbers. And we've got this little L-shaped piece. We're going to take this L-shaped piece and put it on the grid so that it covers three of the numbers. Then we're going to add the three numbers that it's covering. We're going to call that S. We're going to write that number down. And then we're going to do this with every possible way I can put this little L-shaped piece on this grid. So we're going to do it a bunch, a bunch of times, get a whole lot of different values of S. And then we're going to add all those up. Huh. That sounds hard. I mean, we could start with the L piece here covering the 1, 4, and 5. That gives us 1 plus 4 plus 5. That's 10. I could cover the 2, the 1, and the 4. That's 7 more. 10 plus 7 is 17. I can cover the 1, the 2, and the 5. That's 8 more. 8 and 17 is 25. It's a bad way to do the problem. Ah. And I, I, you know, I might not get all the ways to put the L-shaped piece on there, and I'm going to have to add three digits a bunch of different times, and I know what the chance is that I'm going to get all those right. No, that's not going to happen. So 
we need to think about this problem a little bit differently back here. We thought about the problem a little bit differently by looking at one vertex at a time. Let's come back here and look at this problem one number at a time. Let's take a look at the one right there. How many times will the one pop up in one of these sums, one of these s's? Well, if the L-shaped piece is here, the one, four, and five, or the two, one, and the four, or the one, two, and the five. There are three different ways we can get that one into our sum. Similarly, there are three different ways to get the three into the sum. Two, three, six, five, two, three, five, six, three, and so on for each of the corners, for the seven and the nine. So the one's gonna show up three times, the three's gonna show up three times, the seven's gonna show up three times, and so is the nine. So we know when we add up all these S's, we're gonna have three times, we're gonna have the one, the three, the seven, and the nine. Adding this is easy. One and nine is 10, three and seven is 10, this whole sum is 20, three times 20 is 60. So we've taken care of the corners. Now let's look at these on the sides. Let's take a look at the two. Now we've got the four, one, two, the one, two, five, the two, five, four, and over here on the other side, three, two, five, two, five, six, and two, three, six. So there's six ways total that I can get that two into the sum. Six ways for the four, six ways for the six, six ways for the eight. So we're gonna have six times two plus four plus six plus eight. Because each of these numbers is gonna pop up in one of these S's six times. Two plus eight is 10, four plus six is also 10. This is six times 20, that's 120. And all we're left with is the centerpiece, the five. Well, how many ways can we have the five show up? Wow, five almost always shows up except for when the L-shaped piece is in the corner. So let's see, we've got seven, eight, five, eight, five, four, seven, four, five. So there are three ways the five will show up when the L-shaped piece is placed wholly in this square. There are three of the four, there are four ways to put the L-shaped piece in there. Three of them cover the five. Over here, there'll be three ways to cover the five. Over here, there'll be three ways to cover the five. And up here, so there'll be 12 ways to cover the five, so the five is gonna show up 12 times. And that'll contribute 12 times five equals 60. And we add these up and we get our answer, 240. So the main moral of the story here is when you're doing lots of computation in a problem and it looks really tricky, step back, try to think about the problem another way.